So very good evening to all of you. We will start with the today's right discussion on of your NABARD phase two examination. Right, we will discuss one important broad topic that can come in your examination, and subsequently after this discussion is over, we will discuss also some of the objective question for your revision purpose from soil science as the target was given for this question and the soil science to you. Right, so I think all of you might have tried to write the answer for this question. If I am right, how many of you have tried at least to write, say yes, no, yes, very good, very good. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So this is a previous year question also of UPSC, right? If you have gone through, this is a previous year question of UPSC. And this question has appeared in UPSC, GS3, right? So we, we have taken up this question. <clears throat> and the question asks, what are the different types of Agriculture subsidies given to farmer both at national and the state level and critically analyze the agriculture subsidy regime with reference to the distortions created by it. It is asking, right? So, as all of you can see, that today's our topic of discussion is what the topic of discussion is subsidy versus. investment dilemma in Indian agriculture, Indian agriculture. So as all of you can see in this, uh, all of you can see this in this graph, right? Uh, it has been shown, right? From year 1980 till year 2014-15, uh, how the graph of the different subsidies in India has gone and how the investment in uh, agriculture has right grown over the years. So if you carefully observe, <clears throat> if you carefully observe the thing, the public capital formation as a percentage of GDP, this line, right, and input subsidy, uh, subsidy, credit subsidy, irrigation subsidy, fertilizer subsidy, power subsidy, premium subsidy. So these are different types of subsidies that were given to the Indian agriculture. And if you see all these graphs except this one. This blue line, if you remove, right, this is the graph related to gross capital formation in agriculture. Gross capital formation is the investment what has been done in the agriculture. So if you'll see this graph, right, if you'll see this graph, this graph is falling, right? So this graph should have gone like this, but it is going like this. So this is a very <clears throat> dismal scenario for the Indian agriculture right very bad situation for the agriculture because until and unless investment is not there in any sector not only in agriculture in any sector the requisite growth what is required for that particular sector will never take place right so this graph has gone in opposite direction instead of going like this it has gone like this so we can say that the investment as a whole in indian agriculture has declined over the period of time but the bad thing right like the subsidies, which should have declined, which should have rationalized over the period of time, has gone up. right? All graphs are going on. So that is the point of discussion for today, that what is good for Indian agriculture, subsidy or investment, right? And what should be the midway between the subsidy and the investment in agriculture? So this was the question only asked that, what are the different types of subsidies you can take clue from this irrigation credit input all this are subsidies given to the indian agriculture and the investment portion has been declining which should have inclined over the period of time so if you have if you have studied the different research reports of the agriculture economics say ashok gulati or if you have gone through the different reports of international council of international economic research international council of International Economic Research or the reports of Ashok Gulati, they all these reports have given very good data that if you invest rupee one, one side in subsidy, and if you invest this rupee one on the other side, your investment, what would be the multiplier effect on poverty alleviation or the growth? of Indian agriculture, you can see, I will just show to you so that you get some idea. You can see that I have given in the conclusion part, 
you can write this certain statement not only for this question but any type of question where you want that agriculture should grow or the investment in agriculture can grow so you can take this example of international council of economic uh, international economic research report that every rupee spent on agriculture research and development yields a better return 11.2 so if you are investing rupee 1 in agriculture right in research and development it will give you rupees 1 would give you rupees 11 right but if same rupee 1 if you invest in say fertilizer subsidy it will just give you less than that right if you invest that one rupee in power it will give you that plus 0 0.79 so this data you can put forward when you're writing essay or when you're writing say certain things related to investment in agriculture or subsidy in agriculture so this data and statistics you can start or you can conclude your answer that will create definitely create an impact right over your answer okay so let's go back where we have started this portion that this is the situation so the thing the solution for now is to rationalize the subsidy right so rationalize the subsidy slowly we should right phase out from the subsidy and move on towards the investment that is very good thing that you should remember now let's come back to the question the first part of the question was that what are the different subsidies in agriculture right subsidies in agriculture that was being asked so let's move on to the question and what could have been written so we can start with introduction that public investments in agriculture as a percentage of agriculture gdp has declined from 3.9 percent in 1881 to 2.2 percent in 14-15 while the input subsidies as a percentage of agriculture gdp has increased from 2.8 percent to 8 percent 8% over the same period of time. So this could have started and then coming to the main context of the question without taking here and there that what are the different types of subsidies available for the Indian agriculture. So everybody you know that the fertilizer subsidy Indian government is expanding so much. So after writing this just to give some good statistics or example that uh, this year's budget if you know that rupees 1.64 trillion is the subsidy on the fertilizers then credit everybody knows i think if you're uh, preparing for nabard so much we are giving the interest subvention so you can just mention about the modified interest subvention scheme what is the effective rate of interest uh in, in miss scheme what what is the effective rate of interest in miss very good it is four percent so just give example of this then power subsidies. So Electricity Act of 2003 empowers that states that they, they can give subsidy for the powers. You everybody know about the PM Kusum, you know about the diesel subsidy being given in different parts of the India. You can mention those. Then coming on to the export subsidy, many states like uh, Maharashtra and all, they give subsidy for the transportation. Whenever you are taking to the uh, agri products reports, they give certain export subsidy for the transportation part. You can mention that example. Agriculture infrastructure subsidy, Kisko Nepata, everybody we are preparing for Nabad. Greenhouses, right? So much subsidy we are giving 50 to 60 percent. Other examples, but where we are giving, which scheme is giving subsidy for the infrastructure creation in agriculture? Name some schemes. Name some schemes which is giving. Very good, AIF Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, very good, Aryan. MIDH, RKVY, all such schemes are giving uh, infrastructure subsidy. Then seeds subsidy, the states like Rajasthan is implementing schemes called Mukhya Mantri Beach Solomon Yojana, where the subsidy on the seeds are being given. Food subsidies, uh, you can give the example of public distribution system, right? Irrigation subsidy, drip irrigation in PMKS, why you know that the subsidy, what is the, uh, what is the per drop, more drop, what is the subsidy given to the general farmers and the SPST for the small farmers and to the general category of farmers? Yeah, very good, 45 to 55, very good percent. This can be asked in the question. So very easy, just give one, one example to supplement your point. So first, Part of the question is clear that what are different forms of subsidy being given to the and you can give easily the examples associated with if they ask in the examination examples with the different type of subsidies. Ankit says yes, very good. Aryan says yes, very good. Prashant, Surya, okay, very good, very good, very good, Lucifer, very good. So this could have been mentioned over. In the exam. So this is first part is over. Next part of the question asks that critically examine, critically examine when it says critically means you have to be critics, you have to be critics means both you have to point out the positive and the negative things of the subsidy. 
सो पॉजिटिव थिंग्स कैन यू कैन मेंशन दी पॉजिटिव रोल बूस्टिंग एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्शन पैसे आएंगे तो प्रोडक्शन बढ़ेगा भले ही शॉर्ट टर्म में बढ़े बट बढ़ेगा द एग्जांपल इज अ ग्रीन रिवॉल्यूशन राइट यू कैन मेंशन द सब्सिडीज ऑन योर फर्टिलाइजर्स शॉर्ट टर्म में तो बढ़ाते ही है इंश्योरिंग द फूड सिक्योरिटी एज मोर प्रोडक्शन विल बी देयर इट विल लीड टू फूड सिक्योरिटी वी कैन से इंपॉर्टिंग मार्जिनल फार्मर्स बिकॉज़ दे आर अनेबल टू परचेस द इनपुट्स दे आर अनेबल टू परचेस द राइट डीजल फॉर देयर फार्मिंग प्रैक्टिसेस सो इट विल इंपॉवर द मार्जिनल फार्मर्स promoting the rural uh, development if the agriculture develops it will lead to the development of the rural india last but not least it will lead to the te- technological adoption paisa aayega to they can purchase more 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 uh, farm implements the example being the smam scheme jiske through aap different power tillers tractors etc etc purchase kar sakte ho so these are the certain positive roles i think five roles you can write it very easily everything is related to production production bada to food security hua empower hua to purchase kiya purchase kiya to rural development hua it's done and dusted clear the cycle how it will lead to the positive effects the subsidy ek yaad rahega to sab yaad rahega ek ka example pata hai to you can quote the examples of everything so try to link each other and you will be able to recall everything chalo the positive critical analysis is over now coming on to the negative analysis so obviously if the subsidy will increase the fiscal burden on the government of india will increase if you will give subsidy for the diesels if you will give subsidy for the fertilizer they will use it more than they required it will lead to degradation of soil it will lead to the environmental pollutions because of use of more diesels as in the case of punjab etc you can give okay distortion of the market prices obviously right distortion of market prices is there because msp may you procure karte hain it also lead to the serialization of the indian agriculture it distorts the cropping pattern as well theek hai along with the market prices it distorts the distorts the cropping pattern of the country now india's cropping pattern is already distorted it is right inclined towards serialization that is excessive production of cereals <clears throat> then inefficient resource utilization obviously it is also one of the problem right that will lead to the inefficient because efficient way will not be using the resources because jahan subsidy hoga unhi resources kam use karenge right then inequitable distribution agriculture subsidies theek hai inequitable hota the large farmers gets more subsidy in practical situation the developed states in india gets more subsidies compared to the developing states so these are certain negative points that you can mention so what sort of distortion it will lead to it will lead to fiscal burden it will lead to environmental distortion it will lead to market distortion it will lead to your cropping pattern distortion right uh, inequitable distribution of resources can be there and many more such points regional disparity is very good many more such points you can include in the negative role of subsidies towards economic development theek okay? hai this is there now this points that i have told you just recently very good points isko yaad kar lena rat lena you can use in multiple areas in questions related to agriculture the icr book also uses an interesting model to show that every rupee spent on agriculture research and development yields better return 11.2 compared to the returns on every rupee spent on fertilizer that is just 0.88 power subsidies are just 0.79 education 0.97 on roads 1.10 so almost 80% of the expenditure going to agriculture is in the form of input subsidies and only 20% is going to the investment so jo bhi hum humse tax collection ho raha hai 80% of that is going towards where 80% is going towards the subsidies and only 20% is going towards your investment so this is a very dismal scenario the future of the agriculture lies in investment as it is a long term solution the present need is rationalization of subsidy where we can slowly phase out subsidy and shift towards investment in agriculture again according to icrir if public money is spent on agriculture research and development and building road instead of being spent on for, uh, subsidies on fertilizer for irrigation marginal returns in terms of number of people bought very good point out of income poverty or higher gdp growth is expected to be almost 5 to 10 times more very good statistics that you can use while writing answers in your examination bahut hi acha point hai ye bhi ye bhi ye bhi theek hai so for example if every million rupees spent on agriculture research 328 people are pulled out of poverty in contrast the same spent on power subsidies brings only 23 people out of poverty 
अगर आप एक मिलियन रुपीज स्पेंड करते हो एग्रीकल्चर के रिसर्च में ये पॉवर्टी से घींच के निकालेगा थ्री ट्वेंटी एट पीपल बट वही रुपीज वन मिलियन रुपीज इफ यू इन्वेस्ट राइट ओवर इन पावर सब्सिडीज इट विल जस्ट पुल आउट ट्वेंटी थ्री पीपल सो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वट डू यू वॉन्ट टू डू वेर यू वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट क्या आप एक मिलियन इधर लगाओगे या इधर लगाओगे वेर विल यू इन्वेस्ट टू पुल द पीपल आउट ऑफ पॉवर्टी सो दिस पॉइंट यू कैन मैंशन आई थिंक डेफिनेटली इट विल एड इम्पैक्ट टू योर आंसर ठीक है गुड क्लियर एवरी वन The points that you can mention, Mazaya. Okay, these are the points you can include in your answer. Next, we'll fastly moving on to the objective portion of today. Let's discuss some of the questions uh, of objective. But after discuss, करते हैं दस मिनट में फिर आप सब अपने पढ़ाई पे वापस हो जाएं. So let me. First question: Which of the following rock is formed by consolidation of molten magma below the earth's surface? Such question have came last year. Very good, igneous rocks. Igneous rocks. So igneous rocks. Example over here will be your granite. Okay. Very good. Next question: Which type of rock has sixty-five percent or more SiO two? That is acidic. Right. Jaha bhi silicon oxide aagya. That means It is talking about the acidity. So right answer will be acidic rock. Next, hmm. yeah. Which which of the following is an example of rock that undergoes metamorphism to become marble? Right. Everybody has seen marble. Which is the example? Very good. Very good, very good, very good. Limestone. Limestone is the right answer over here. Which of the following pair is correct regarding metamorphic transformation? Which of the following is right regarding metamorphic transformation? No, sandstone slate नहीं देता है. Wrong. C is the right. Granite gives the genesis. Next, in the soil forming process. बताइए इसमें से विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज कंसिडर ए पैसिव सॉइल फॉर्मिंग फैक्टर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ पैसिव सॉइल फॉर्मिंग फैक्टर सी पैरेंट मटेरियल वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट विच प्रोसेस इज बीइंग रेफर्ड इन दिस क्वेश्चन इस टाइप के क्वेश्चन लास्ट ईयर भी आए हैं विच प्रोसेस इज बीइंग रेफर्ड इन द इन द पैसेज वेरी गुड वेरी गुड इट इज पोर्जोलाइजेशन अगर नहीं पता है देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ सॉइल फार्मिंग प्रोसेस राइट द स्पेसिफिक प्रोसेस एंड द फंडामेंटल प्रोसेस प्लीज गो थ्रो दी नोट्स अच्छे से मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया प्लीज गो थ्रो दी नोट्स एंड दी लेक्चर वीडियो दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन केम लास्ट ईयर नेक्स्ट डैश फॉर्म्स द स्केलेटन ऑफ द सॉइल डैश फॉर्म्स द स्केलेटन ऑफ द सॉइल वेरी गुड बोथ ए एंड बी साइंट एंड सिल्ड Clay is not the part of the skeleton of the soil. Next, as per I triple S, which is the particle size of the clay? This question has come many times. I think most of you might be knowing what is the size of the clay. It is less than zero point zero zero two mm. Very good. Next, to be designated as to be designated as a clay, soil must contain dash percent of clay. इसी soil को clay soil बोलने के लिए what percent of clay should be there in the soil? C very good thirty five to forty B नहीं है C is the right answer thirty five to forty percent next which term is used for naturally occurring aggregates in soil so many times told pets is the right answer right pets is the right answer which of the following factor increases the particle density of soil which of the following factor increases the particle density of the soil C very good. C is the right answer. Consider the following statement about bulk density of soil and identify the incorrect statement. Which of the following is incorrect with res respect to your bulk density? The 
A, very good. Those who are saying here, bulk density and all the mineral soil becomes fine in texture. This one, thicker, okay? incorrect. Next, what does hue in Munsell chart represent? Sabko pata hoga. What does hue in Munsell chart represents? HCV, hue color crop. Very good. Spectral color, very good. Spectral color, hue value chroma. HC Verma, U value chroma, very good. Dominant spectral color. Next, uh, in Munsell color chart, what does the term chroma refers to? What does the term chroma refers to? Very good. Purity of the color. Purity of the color in HCV. The chroma represents the purity of the color. Next, at field capacity, water is held in the soil with the force of dash atmosphere, which makes it readily available to the plant. Yes, very good, one by third atmosphere. So I have taught you this topic is very, very, very important for your examination. Those who have not revised it, please revise the biological and the physical classification of water in the soil. Next, which, which type of water is being described over here? Which type of water is being described over here? If the forces is more than 31 atmosphere, Easy point answer bata doge. If the force is 31, more than 31, obviously it is hygroscopic coefficient. Very good. Ye classification VVI for your examination. Go through the conceptual clarity of this in my lecture. Next, dash indicates the relative ease of movement of water in the soil. The characteristic that define how fast air and water move in the soil. Permeability is the right answer. Permeability is the right answer. Fastness, jab dekhte, toh permeability hota hai. Achha se maine samjha tha jab when I was teaching you about the physical characteristics of soil. Thik hai, wahan pe maine samjha hai har ek cheez ko. Next, which amendment is commonly used to manage the pH of this acidic soil and reduce the toxicity of the aluminium and the iron? Very easy question. Lime is the right answer. Next, reclamation of alkaline soil is done by, reclamation of alkaline soil is done by, very good, it is done by gypsum. Next, the value of exchangeable sodium percentage in alkali soil is how much? The value of ESP. It is less than 15. Last year, a paragraph based question came from here. Paragraph based question came from this concept about the classification of soil. revise Next, consider the following statement with respect to the management of saline soil. Identify the incorrect statement. Identify the incorrect statement. D is wrong. Gypsum can be applied to decrease ne increase kar dega na. Gypsum can be applied to decrease the effect of the salinity. Wrong statement. In universal, universal soil loss equation, very important equation. Okay? A is equal to R K L S C P. What does K denote? What does K denote? Very good. Soil erodibility. Soil erodibility is represented by K. The soil transported through wind is termed as the soil transported through wind is termed as what? Aeolian. Which soil order is characterized by presence of clay and highly fertile commonly found in the Deccan regions? Batao, easy here. Verti souls. Verti souls. Verti souls. He Deccan will stand due to black content, the clay content. Dash is formed in tropical region under high rainfall conditions and is characterized by high acidity and rain uh, iron content. D, 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 very good, laterite. Jaha bhi tropical regions honge, high rainfall hoga, waha pe laterite soil milte hai, thik hai? Next, which soil order is typically acidic and commonly found in northeastern India and forested regions? Commonly acidic and found in northeastern India, particularly in forested regions. 
Altizoles, very good. Altizole is the right answer for this question. Which of the following symptom indicates deficiency of phosphorus in plant? P for phosphorus, P for purple. This is the right answer. Which symptom is commonly observed in plants suffering from calcium deficiency? Very good, very good. BER, blossom and rot is associated with calcium deficiency. Next, which is the percentage of nitrogen in urea and DAP? What is the percentage of nitrogen in urea and DAP? 46 and 18. Both questions have appeared in the word. Next question, which is, which of the following is an example of complex fertilizer? Which of the following is an example of complex fertilizer? complex. MAP is right answer. Next, which fertilizer has highest percentage of nitrogen? Which fertilizer has highest percentage of nitrogen? That is anhydrous ammonia. Anhydrous ammonia mein, what is the percentage of nitrogen in anhydrous ammonia? Very good, 82%. Last question, which of the following plant is commonly used as indicator of boron deficiency? Which of the following plant is used as indicator of boron deficiency? Sunflower, very good. Sunflower is the right answer. Chike, with this, I will end the class today, right? We will again meet tomorrow with a new set of questions. Okay. I think this would help in your revision and remembering. Jo sunte ho na, wo zada time tak you can remember the points. Okay. That is the advantage. Because if you will see that the baad mein recording dekh lenge, to that never happens in this precise situation. So try to attend it live so that at least whatever we discuss in the class, achche achche, jaise maine aapko points bataya, both the research, how you can use in investment, how you can use in subsidy, kaise benefit ho raha. So that it, you can write those, you can remember those points easily. Okay? So with this, I will end today's class. Bye-bye. Take care.